Hey guys, uh, I'm John with Tucker Snowcat, and today I am going to go over the operation um, of a Tucker Snowcat Trail Boss with a 12-way blade and a tiller. And so what we will do is start by turning the key on into the on position. And you always want to wait for your display to fully light up before you start the cat because what will happen is if you start it before you have all your gauges displayed sometimes something might be grayed out uh, because you know it didn't gain that communication that it needed with whatever component uh, so is. our machine is at a high idle and it's been warmed up so it's ready for operation and what I want to do now is go over all the different controls and so we're going to start with this switch right here this fan switch is actually for the engine fan this would help cool off the engine if it uh, let's say got too warm or was starting to overheat um, now that is thermostatically controlled and it will automatically come on once the coolant reaches 205 degrees um, so I would say 90% of the time you're never even going to use this switch however if something was to happen you know to your thermostatic switch or maybe your transmission or your hydraulics is starting to get a little warmer than what you would like um, you know, I like to see my, my transmission always below 200 degrees. I like to see my hydraulics below 180 degrees. Um, if I started seeing some of those higher temperatures, I could go ahead and manually turn that switch on and that would turn the fan on and it would suck more air through the heat exchangers and cool off those components. The next switch that we're going to look at down here, now this is your headlight switch. So when you turn that on, it's going to turn on your lower lights. Those are the lights on the bottom of your cab. Okay, the next switch, guys, is your beacon switch. And so when you turn that on, it's got a little strobe beacon on the back of the cab, and that's going to be on. Uh, we use that for safety. You know, when we're out grooming or we're running around where there's other people, we want to make sure that we have some sort of indicator, especially at night, uh, that you know tells them, hey, there's something going on over there. There's a flashing light. Uh, we need to be cautious. Move over one more switch and you got your heated mirrors. Next one over to the right is your heated glass. Now that will heat your windshield plus your side glass. So if your side glass is being heated and your mirrors are being heated, you're always going to be able to look out your mirrors and see what you need to see behind the vehicle. Um, and Jeff here, he's behind the camera. He can scroll over and look into those mirrors so you guys can kind of see what I'm talking about. Now this one's still a little fogged up because I just now turn the switch on but uh, if you give it a few minutes it would uh, clear up. Next switch is your backup lights. Now those automatically come on when you put the transmission in reverse. However, if there was something back there that you wanted to keep an eye on, uh, you could manually override those lights and you could just turn them on with the switch. Okay, these switches here you guys, these are for your air lockers on your differentials. And so in order to use those, you would have to turn your air compressor on first and then your front locker will not engage by itself you know it does light up but you'll notice there's no alarm now when you lock the rear locker in you have an alarm hopefully you guys can hear that it gives you a little indicator here on the display showing that it's locked um, there's a snooze button that you could shut the alarm off however it comes back every two minutes just to remind the operator that his lockers are engaged and to not forget to turn those off because the thing is when your lockers are engaged it puts more stress on the steering components so when you're out driving the machine and your lockers are engaged you don't want to try to do a lot of steering um, as soon as you are finished with your lockers you want to make sure you turn them back to the off position and then you can steer the vehicle all you'd like next switch is your in cab lights and then you've got two more switches to the right of that one will say inhibit reach in and what that switch is for is if this vehicle was going to do a regen um, and you felt like you were in an area where there might be some fire hazard you could actually inhibit that regen and then you know do a manual regen once you got the vehicle into a safe area where there was no fire hazard because what happens is when it does a regen the exhaust gets extremely hot and with that exhaust being extremely hot we don't want to risk you know causing a fire obviously we're out in the snow 
there's probably not going to be a lot of fire danger. But if you were, let's say, in a hay barn or, or out in the springtime and you had a lot of dry pine needles around your exhaust or something like that, you could, you could inhibit that regen uh, and then just do a manual regen, you know, when you got to a safe area. This is your heater control, three-speed fan. This is your temperature control, and it's just a simple twist knob. Over here you have your windshield wipers. Okay guys, um, so we went through the switches. Uh, however, there are a few more switches actually on the display itself, and so what we have is if we hit this bottom left button, this is what we call the menu button, it gives you a drop down menu. And within that drop down menu you have gauge display, you have engine diagnostics where you could actually read uh, fault codes, both active and inactive fault codes that the engine ever had. And so what we're seeing here is we have, we have an up, a couple older fault codes that are inactive, uh, probably during the startup of this vehicle when it was manufactured, and they just haven't been cleared out yet. Uh, the next one would be user settings. In user settings, you can actually change the backlighting to day or night. You can change the brightness. You can change the units from USA standard to metric. Um, you can also change the language to whatever language you would like the display to to have. You can change the date um, and then the time as well. Uh, and then the last one is the wallpaper so you can actually change the color on the back of the display. You know right now it's blue. Um, you can change that to gray or there's some other colors to choose from as well. The, uh, the last button here, utilities. This can come up. This is where you can actually reset the trip for the miles. So, so if I was to hit that it's going to ask me to hit the enter button, which is the bottom right. Now when I go back into my gauge display, you can see the top is zeroed out. This vehicle has a total of 475.6 miles. However, the trip miles have been tripped, so um, they're at zero. Now another button is this enter button. We want to talk about this a little bit as well, because when I hit that enter button, it's going to give me some more features. One of them being switches which is over here. Now this is where I can energize my trailer plug wire, my hydraulic float for my drag, my auxiliary lower lights, I can turn those off and on. And then you can also trip your uh, miles on this one here as well. If you hit that, again it would give you uh, a little prompt that says you gotta hit the enter button to be able to trip those miles, you hit the enter button, and then again when we go back to our gauge display everything's zeroed out. So that was the display. It's, uh, it's very user friendly, very simple. Um, one thing I did forget to show you guys though, and I'm going to have Jeff zoom in here. Now if you hit either one of these bottom buttons, these little bottom buttons here, it's going to scroll you to another screen. Now this screen has some other information on it that the other screen doesn't display. One of them being percent throttle, percent load, um, boost pressure on your turbo, some things like that. I don't know why you would actually need to pay attention to that information. I guess if you're doing, if you're trying to diagnose an issue, um, you could you could look at that. But uh, for the most part, uh, my myself and I think most of our customers prefer prefer the home screen. Now we're going to talk about the operation of this vehicle, you know, how to drive it. And so what we have is a foot brake just to the right of the steering column. We have an accelerator pedal to the right of your foot brake. We have your steering wheel. Now this steering wheel does tilt and it does telescope. We have an automatic transmission shift lever and we have an emergency brake. That being in the on position, this being in the off position. Now this transmission will not go into gear unless your high idle switch is off and your foot is on the brake. It also won't go into gear if your emergency brake is on. However, if your emergency brake was off, your high idle switch was in the off position and your foot was on the brake and the vehicle would not go into gear we gave it an override switch, which is right down here. And Jeff, you can zoom in. Right down here beside the emergency brake handle is a little red button, and that's a brake override. 
And the reason we have that is we want to make sure that we never have a customer stranded where they can't put their vehicle into gear. Um, so if your high idle switch was in the off position, your foot was on the brake, your emergency brake was off, and it still would not go into drive, you could manually override by pushing that button, dropping it into gear, drive the vehicle back, and then diagnose the issue of why it would not go into gear. Um, it could possibly be a pressure switch on the brake system or something of that nature. Now that we know how to drive the vehicle, what we're going to do is talk about how to set up the tiller and how to operate the blade. Um, so we have a little display up here and we call this the MD3 module. Okay, and when you first start your vehicle, it's going to ask you if you want tiller mode or drag mode. Okay, F1 being tiller mode and F4 being drag mode. Now we have a tiller behind this vehicle, so we're going to pick tiller mode. The next prompt is going to be tiller lift in reverse, on or off. And so what that is asking is when you put the vehicle in reverse, do you want it to come up automatically or no? Do you not want it to come up automatically? And so I always choose on. I like it when I put my vehicle in reverse. I want that tiller to automatically come up so I don't forget to lift it up and accidentally back over my flaps. So we're going to turn that on. Then it's going to give you a menu. So you have downforce, high lift down, high lift up, and float. Now before the tiller will do anything, we have to hit high lift down. And what that does is it energizes the system, basically. Even if the tiller was already down on the ground, when you start your vehicle and you do your initial setup on your tiller, you always have to hit F2, which is high lift down. Once you do that, you can actually put the tiller in forward or reverse. Now the up arrow is going to be forward and the down arrow is going to be reverse. So if I hit the up arrow, it gives me a little indicator over here that says forward and then I can actually adjust my speed using my joystick. Now this joystick has dual purpose. This will operate your blade and the tiller both. And what it has is a little switch for your index finger. Now if I pull that switch and I push up on this switch here at the same time it gives me a little indicator up here showing what speed my tiller is at. Right now I'm at 47 percent. If I went all the way to the top it would go to 100 percent. Now my tiller is in forward spinning at 100 percent. Now if I wanted to turn the tiller off I could simply hit the up arrow and it would turn it off. Now if I hit the down arrow it goes into reverse and it's the same procedure. You pull the tiller switch with your index finger and you push up on the far right switch and it gives you a little graph shows you what your percentage is at. Right now I'm at 75% in reverse. I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. The next thing I'm going to show you how to do is turn your downforce on. That would be F1. Now if I hit F1 I get a little graph. It's at 0%. On my joystick I can adjust that by pulling the tiller switch with my index finger and pushing up on the left switch. And it gives me a little graph. Right now I'm at 32% downforce. If I went all the way to the top, there again I'm at 100%. To turn the downforce off, you simply just hit the F1 button. It turns the downforce off. The other option you would have is just to run your tiller in float mode, which would be F4. And that works really well in soft, deep snow. You know, if you have a big snowstorm that dumps several feet of snow, it's really soft. Uh, sometimes running downforce will cause some issues. Um, it'll try to till too much and it might plug up your tiller. So you can just simply just put it in float and then basically it's just the weight of the tiller um, grooming the trail. A few other features on the tiller controls, you guys. Um, you can operate with the joystick one of them being emergency lift and so I got my tiller set up I'm going along and I'm grooming and I need to get my tiller up and so what I do is I pull that tiller switch with my index finger and I hit the left button down here and what that does is it lifts the tiller all the way up out of harm's way 
shuts the tiller drum off and what you can do is you can resume that by hitting the right button so if you pull the switch and you hit the right button it resumes and goes right down exactly how you had everything set up so you don't have to redo any of your controls whatsoever it's all preset and all you did was lift it up maybe drove across the road or whatever it might be and then you're able to resume it and set it right back down in the same position that you had it in the other feature is the depth of cut which is the center button here so if I was to pull the tiller switch with my index finger and run the center button that's my depth of cut that's how much I'm cutting with my tiller drum so if you push forward it rolls the tiller deeper into the snow if you pull back it rolls the tiller up out of the snow um, what we do is we watch our tiller pressure which is right on the top of the MD3 um, there's a little indicator that says tiller pressure and we watch that if that starts getting over let's say 3000 psi we can actually roll that tiller up out of the snow and uh, produce less pressure and what that would do is this be easier on the machine it would build less heat and as long as you're leaving a good trail there's really no reason to overwork your vehicle we discussed the tiller controls now what we're going to discuss is the blade controls um, so on that same joystick that we we're using for the tiller remember when we pulled the tiller switch with our index finger these all became tiller controls now if I'm not pulling that switch and I'm just using the joystick by itself without pulling that switch and I pull back on it it's going to lift the blade up and if I push forward it's going to push the blade down now in order to do that there's a safety paddle you know Jeff you can zoom in right down here you see this little paddle you guys you have to actually squeeze that otherwise the blade won't do anything um, as far as tilt and up and down all that controls is tilt and up and down so just make sure you're squeezing the safety control and then you're able to go up and down and tilt right and tilt left and then the other features this blade has is wings so your far right switch would be your right wing your far left switch would be your left wing Your center switch would be your depth of cut on your blade, or your roll function as some people call it. You know, the further ahead that it is, the more it's going to cut, and the further back it's rolled, the less it's going to cut. The other functions would be your angle, so that would be the buttons down here. So if I hit the left button, it's going to angle it to the left. If I hit the right button, it's going to angle it to the right. And then back to center that's how you operate a Tucker Trail Boss um, so now is what we're gonna do is we are going to get some drone footage we're gonna go out and groom and Jeff he's been behind the camera here the whole time and he's gonna operate the drone and we are gonna do we're gonna have some fun we're gonna go out and roll some snow and and make some corduroy with the tiller so uh, thank you guys for your time really appreciate it yeah, so here we are we're grooming and you know one thing i wanted to talk about is rpms and one thing i like to do especially on these high horsepower trail boss machines is run a lower rpm than what some people are used to so i run around 16 to 1800 rpms which as you can see now i'm in second gear i'm right around 1600 rpms that's four miles an hour now if i got good conditions and i can speed up i'll go ahead and put my transmission in manual mode and bump it up to third gear and what that'll do is let me gain some speed and keep my rpms down and as you can see now i'm doing approximately six miles per hour and i'm just a little bit over 1900 rpms and there again we can shift up to fourth gear and that'll lower the rpms even more once you find that happy speed where it's leaving a good trail and your RPMs are you know below 2,000 we always want to keep our RPMs below 2,000 there again I like to run between 16 to 1800 um, I'm gonna go ahead and slope it down a little bit just because that's a little fast for this trail and we're gonna try to find that 
16 to 1800 mark. And there we are, we're at five miles an hour, we're at 1600 RPMs. We're gonna burn probably about four to five gallons per hour at that RPM. As if we were, if we were running, let's say 2000 or 2200 RPMs, we'd be burning a lot more fuel. And the machine will perform just fine at that higher RPM, but again, you're gonna burn a lot more fuel, so it's really unnecessary. So just get in the habit of upshifting and downshifting manually to be able to maintain those RPMs. And again, you guys, one thing I didn't mention before, make sure you wear your seatbelt. You can see I got mine on here, and uh, just be safe. If it looks like it's uh, a dangerous situation, you know, don't be afraid to slow down. Put it in first gear and just crawl and go extremely slow. Um, what we've seen, you know, I've been at Tucker for a lot of years. I've been there for 20 years, and it seems like almost every single issue is always due to high speed. So keep your speed down and keep it safe. Thank you, guys.